I would love to talk about computer science, but it makes my mother bored. Please welcome Mikhail from Digital Learning Games. Hello everybody, my name is Mikhail and I'm a lecturer in the School of Digital Technologies where I mainly teach in the Digital Learning Games program, which is what I'd like to talk to you about today. So welcome to Digital Learning Games. Here are the key things you need to know about our program. It's a two-year international master's program delivered in English. It has been established for five years now. Um, and the focus of the program, as the name suggests, is on using and designing video games in education and training settings. Feel free to check out our website, the link you can find here. But before I do uh, talk in more detail about the particularities of how the program works, um, let me introduce the broader um, scope of what we're trying to do. So what are we interested in, in here? Um, we all know that video games are a major entertainment industry. Um, it's what a lot of people are passionate about is how a lot of people have been spending their time, especially now that the world is amid a pandemic situation. Uh, but that's not everything that there is to video games. Video games are also a versatile cultural form and medium that can be used for a lot of different purposes, which include education, customer engagement, raising awareness about various societal issues. So these kinds of games that do something else other than pure entertainment are what we call serious games. And learning games is one subset of that. Um, just to give you three quick examples that I've personally been involved in to make it easier to imagine if you haven't encountered the term serious games before. Um, the picture you're seeing at the top is, I think the first commercial game that I was involved in it was a game for younger kids to learn vocabulary, mostly um, animal related. Um, the one in the middle was a promotional games. You may have noticed that different brands have taken to using games as a medium for promoting themselves, um, ranging from Burger King to Lego in the recent years. This one is more modest in scope. There was an international conference taking place in Tallinn and I was asked to design a promotional game for that. So that's a screenshot from there. Um, there's also games that have, um, speak to current political and societal events. So there's one game that I recently made about the current political situation in my home country, Belarus. So just to give you some idea of the range of things um, you can be dealing with if you try to apply games beyond mere entertainment. Now let's talk about the program more specifically. Um, so let me introduce some key features of what digital learning games is like as a study program. Our first major emphasis is on interdisciplinarity. Video games are a complex medium and creating them involves a coordinated effort of a team of people with different backgrounds. You need artists, you need developers, you need writers, you need game designers. For educational games, you probably need instructional designers as well. Testers, producers, all kinds of different responsibilities. Um, so these people with different backgrounds need to come together and make it work as a team. And this is exactly what we're looking for in digital learning games. We're looking to recruit professionals and people with different interests because pretty much anyone has something to contribute if you're making a game. The other thing is because making games is a practical and team-based skill, our game courses in digital learning games emphasize team learning and project-based learning, which is to say that for most of the courses in the games module, you will be creating games in teams with teammates from other backgrounds. You'll be working together. And for most of these courses, you'll be expected to contribute something to a specific project, which will culminate in a game or a prototype of a game. And um, we are also an international program, which means that we have people from different countries, different continents, as a matter of fact. Over the past years, we've had five continents represented so far. Still waiting for someone from Australia, so if you're listening, uh, consider joining us. But yes, you'll be meeting and working together with people from different backgrounds in a uh, varied cultural environment where um, you'll learn something about international cooperation. And hopefully um, that is a practical skill as well in today's international um, labor market. So more specifically, I did mention that the program is interdisciplinary in nature. 
what are the kind of typical roles that we're looking for? Um, well, most prominently, to make a game, you need educators, because we're doing learning games. Uh, so that includes instructional designers, teachers, or anyone who has an interest in educational research, let's say. Game designers, so people who invent rules and conceptual gameplay mechanics, people who think and design how the game works, uh, or people who are interested in learning about that because that is what we teach. We need artists and visual designers as well because games need to look good, not just feel good to play. Sound designers, composers, anything to do with audio, very valuable skill in a game delayed team. Writers, especially for more narrative themed games, which are a prominent thread in gaming. But basically anyone else has something to contribute, as I said before. Um, to give you some examples of what kind of projects we've been working on lately, um, here's probably the latest one. Um, it's called Methodica, and it's a digital game about learning research methods. If you are nearly over, or if you're done with your bachelor's studies, you probably have to take one or two research methods courses. And I think a lot of people watching this might agree that research methods is not the most exciting subjects to learn. This is something we've recognized as well. So recently we got a national grant in Estonia to work on a digital game that could be used to improve students' understanding and engagement with the subject of research methods. And that's what the game is about. I probably don't have time to go into detail, uh, but you can check it out. It's on our website and it's an online game that we'll be using in our studies as well. We have been lucky enough to be able to involve some of our students in the development process as designers, developers, and artists. Another thing um, that I'd like to mention is an international Erasmus Plus project called GA STEM, where we collaborated with other institutions in other countries and schools in places like Belgium, Italy, and Finland on using mini games as a vehicle to bridge the gap between STEM or science, technology, engineering, and mathematics and arts education. So our students have created, it's kind of dark, uh, but I guess you can make out the details, a variety of, of small mini games that introduce various subjects from optics and reflections, which is the one you're seeing to the left, um, to things like um, a combination of geometry and abstract art inspired by the works of Mondrian. Lots of different things. Um, if you're wondering where do you go after this, what happens to you after you've graduated from digital learning games? Well, it's quite a few different pathways. If we look at what our existing graduates and alumni have gone on to do with their lives, there's a, there's a spectrum of things. We have game designers and game developers working at game studios. We have software engineers um, and startup entrepreneurs. We also have people who continue to teach in schools and at the higher education level. Um, as well as work as researchers and pursue other um, game-related interests. We have some people who have worked with museums and theaters, the public sphere more broadly because there's really no limits to where and how you can use games beyond just entertainment. If you're wondering what do we actually get to study, how is the study program structured, um, let me give you a few uh, basic pointers. So the core module of the study program is called game design. This is the one module that all of you will be taking if you come to studying digital learning games. There's 40 ECTS credits worth of compulsory courses, which we'll talk about in a minute. There's also elective courses that relate to various facets of games. I'll introduce that as well. Then you get to choose between three separate elective modules. Depending on your interests and career ambitions, you can choose to study interaction design or educational psychology or game development, so the more practical aspect of programming games. In addition to that, there's the university-wide life project, which I imagine you'll be hearing about a lot um, today. And there's also an internship that you can do in Estonia or abroad at a game-related company or any other place where um, a game or gamification could be a viable strategy. And free elective courses, which you're free to choose from. Ultimately, your work here culminates in a master's thesis, which can be completely research-based, or it can be a design project that involves creating and testing your own game and writing up about the experience. Um, so quickly as I can, let me briefly introduce the game design module. So the compulsory courses 
are the ones that you're seeing on the screen right now. We start with a brief introduction to the domain of digital learning games, and then we talk about other facets of game design, such as designing game logic and game mechanics, as we call them, the conceptual rules that guide how games work. Um, then you design learning games in the um, eponymously named course, and we also create assets for games, because games need graphics and sounds and text and all these other things that go into them. This is what the course is about. And we cover other areas ranging from game studies, so existing research into how games work, to level design, to project management, to research methods, and a research seminar that will support you in the process of writing your thesis. As far as elective courses are concerned, you can um, choose any amount of courses, but at least three out of the following range. If you're not a developer but would like to um, tap into the world of programming games, there's a course in basics of game development. There's a course on transmedia storytelling if you're more interested in the narrative interplay of games and other media forms. Um, graphics related courses, um, a course about the game industry taught by an industry practitioner from a game studio. Um, multimedia development gamification, which is this trendy term a lot of people are talking about right now. Um, so if you're interested in turning other things that aren't games into playful, fun experiences, this might be the one for you. Um, but also because students have been requesting some supports in, in terms of research, we have a course on data analysis if you want to do some statistics-based quantitative research for your project or to improve your game. So the elective modules, let me cover them briefly as well. There's the game development module, which is all about programming for games. If you have existing knowledge of programming and would like to build on it, this is the one uh, you might be interested in. So courses range from subjects like math and physics um, to game development patterns to graphics and sound programming, basically the things you're seeing on the screen. Educational psychology. Um, if you are a teacher or a psychologist who's interested in the cognitive benefits of applying games in the classroom or the practicalities of how you can actually use them as a medium to teach people things, this is um, an interesting thing to consider. Um, so we'll look into how games work, how games are used in the classroom, how they affect our mental state, and how to optimize and leverage games as a tool that will create lasting memories and effects and benefits. Finally, there is the interaction design module, which shares a lot of the courses with the human computer interaction program that will be introduced later. Um, there we focus mainly on designing experiences that are optimized for human usability. So things like design theory and methodology, or how do you design interaction methods and interaction patterns for your players when you make a game, or more broadly for any digital solutions. These are the kind of things that you will be focusing on in this module. Again, just because you have to choose one of the three doesn't mean you only can do the courses from that one module. If you're interested, you can take courses from other modules as free electives if something catches your attention. One question we get asked a lot during admission interviews is what do you do with your research thesis? As I mentioned before, you can and probably should consider making a game and writing about the experience, but the research aspect still um, it's still relevant, so you need to consider what is the angle that I'm approaching my work from. So here's some areas that you might be interested in considering. These range from game design, so basically how do you make a better game, to game-based learning, so what are the practicalities of using games in the classroom, to serious games, which is the term I just introduced. How can games help us make the world a better place? Would be, I guess, my summary of the serious game movement. Psychological aspects of game design, so how does our brain process games and what are the cognitive benefits of playing them? Um, and gamification, again the trendy term. How can we transform everyday routines and experiences into playful experiences that can be slightly more fun than just doing them the way that we're, we're currently doing them? Whether it be job practices or exercise or whatever else you seek to gamify. So the learning environment that we have is most of the, the game-related courses will be taking place in the software development lab, which is equipped with state-of-the-art computers that are double boot, so they're Mac and Windows, whichever you're used to. Um, there's VR headsets available for you to develop for. We have the HTC Vive, we have the Oculus Rift, we have the Quest as well. 
Um, and we have pre-installed software such as major game engines, such as Unity and Unreal Engine, um, access to the Adobe Creative Cloud, and basically all the tools you need to produce a game in a team. We also have a small game lab that you can book and use for your own game projects or when you work as a team, which is also equipped with a computer and a VR headset um, and a meeting space. And um, one question we get asked, so we'll try to get that out of the way, is do you need to have a laptop to come and study here? Yes, normally you do. If you want to make games, it does help to have your own device that you can use in your own time. So we kind of do encourage students to consider having a laptop or a desktop computer. That also works. Um, that is, it doesn't have to be state of the art or the latest version of, of whatever hardware, uh, but it does help if it can run basic game software such as Unity. Um, one thing that we're quite happy to have here in DLG, or Digital Learning Games, is a vibrant community of students. Um, over the past few months, it hasn't been quite as vibrant due to having to interact online because of the pandemic. But normally speaking, we have a nice international group of students that do things together. We have a student-run game society that do regular game nights and board game events and other kinds of things um, that are educational and social at the same time. Um, in addition to hanging out with friends within these events, um, you can also participate, in fact, we encourage you to participate in game jams, which are short-term intensive game creation events where you come together, form a team, uh, and make a game in 48 hours or 72 hours in a short span of time, and then you can continue working on it uh, further. So think a hackathon themed on games. That would be a good example. That's something we do on a regular basis. Uh, we also collaborate with industry representatives where we have people from various game studios and, and Tallinn visiting us and giving guest lectures or teaching courses such as game industry. Um, so you'll have some interaction with the game community in Tallinn as well. And um, I believe I'm about done here. This is what I wanted to talk about. If you have questions, I'll have to refer you to one of our students who'll be happy to answer them on my behalf. Um, thank you for your attention and um, if you have any questions about the study program organizations, feel, feel, feel free to reach out to me personally. This is my email. Um, I'll be happy to help. Thank you very much.